The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon. This is, the, this is the hour where I demonstrate the technique of the Chapman Wave, how you can use the peaks and troughs to be able to assess and get directional movement, um, how you can look at different chart patterns that are repeat and repeat, how you can use channel lines and all sorts of things like that. And the great two hours we just had with Steve Rhodes. Thank you, Steve. Happy birthday. And... <coughs> Whoops, a little cough there. And uh, let's go straight to the market, and then we can get down to the nitty gritty. Question the Dan Bass can give the count to the British pound daily. We'll do that. All right, let's look at the Dow. Dow's up 93, 15,016. Been a very interesting uh, period here where that 14,900. Uh, 80 to 40,990 has just been a repellent line. Went once on Friday to the 15,000 level. That was a 15,009. And then, of course, there was uh, news, whatever it was, but there was a sharp sell off, very sharp sell off. And then a spring back, and then a very interesting close. So let's go through how, we, how we're looking at the market, and I'll show you the, um, some of the techniques that we're using here. Uh, the S&P is up. 8.61 at 1663. The comp index is up 24.36.84. Gold is up a dollar 80 at 13.88. Silver is down 13 cents at 23.76. You got platinum down five at 14.89. You got high grade copper at 3.27. Wow, it's up a dollar 70. That's just been a real struggle. Now I'm going to talk about the different uh, divergences that we've got right at, at this uh, particular point. After I finish crude oil down 69 cents. At 109.84, you've got a bonds up 23 30 seconds at 129.24, and the dollar is down 37 um, at 81.79. As the euro is a little bit higher at 1.3.2, 1.325. Now this is going to be very interesting because <clears throat> the chart that I'm showing right now has the um, E-minis. This is the S&P September. They'll be changing over to the December very soon. This is a leg B in the daily. <clears throat> now, what I mean by a leg D, I'll explain in a moment. The 120 minutes has a very complex kind of chart here because what has happened, I'm going to be able to... I've, I didn't draw it in here. I drew it in the diamonds. Okay. What we're looking at here is a pattern that I often look for is basically a rectangle formation. And what it says is within this within this very sharp flagpole or um, two, in this case, two bars that have much higher high, much lower low, within that channel held the, the support exactly, there's been a peak ABC and now a leg D with a potential doji forming in this hour, uh, this 120-minute uh, chart, a uh, bar. At leg D is where you usually anticipate. You see the peak D right here in the E minis in the daily chart right there on the 5th of August at 17.05. Well, it's where you can expect uh, the chance. I always say a chance because there's no guarantee. But it's a chance where there could be a, a deeper or a longer pullback. So we've got to keep this in mind because it's not a peak until a, a full bar goes by. That's a 120-minute bar. That you don't have to call it a candle. It could be a candle. It could be a bar. It's the same high and low. That's the most important thing. Same open and close. It's just the way it's charted. But if 16.65.25, <clears throat> no, if 16.65 is not taken out in the next bar, that'll be a peak D. If 16.65.25 uh, is hit, that just extends leg D, even though it's not a new high. If it goes to a new high bar, at 16, uh, 65.50, that extends leg D. So those are the, those are what we look at. Now, why do I look at that? Because this particular pattern, for those of you who do not know my work, basically what I always like to do is identify the lowest low bar, and from there I merely want to count each successively higher peak. Now, if you're doing it historically, there's no way you can't say that is the low bar. And this particular chart is from my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. This slide. 11 out of 476. 
So when you look at that bar right there, that in fact is the low bar that I would start the count. And what is the count? All I'm doing is counting each successively higher peak. And your only obligation in this technique is to make absolutely sure that you do identify a peak. Sometimes it's so subtle that it's a penny. That penny makes a difference in the wave count. Why? Because you want to get to D. As soon as you get to D, that's where you've got to be somewhat cautious. It doesn't mean to say that you can't uh, continue higher, but it does mean to say that very often D is where you're going to get the longest and deepest pullback. If, it, if in fact, there's just a very mild peak and you start to go towards the highs, uh, the previous high that made the peak D, that means that you've got to be a little bit careful there because you can, in fact, start to accelerate higher. So what happens here in this particular chart? Look, I use an uppercase letter alphabetically in sequence, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G is the highest you can get. This isn't often we get to a G, but there is no H. So G is the highest. If you go to a G and then another leg up, you've got to go back and see, hey, maybe this is recycled. Maybe I missed something. Or maybe there was an instant restart at the previous D, and now we can go not only to another D, but you can go to an E and an F. Hey, sounds complicated. You'll see how easy it is. Look, one, two, three, four higher peaks. It goes to a peak D. It pulls back like a little ABC to the yeah, ABC to the downside, I call it a 1, 2, 3. And what happens is it then goes, recycles to a brand new peak, A, B, C, D, pulls back, and then goes to an E and F. When you use the, techniques, the technique of the uh, 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 slow stochastic and the MACD, as you would see here in the uh, S&P, SPX.X, in the S&P, uh, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, here we go. Here I here on the daily chart. Um, there was the lowest low bar. The last peak was at 1687.18. That was peak E. That was way back on the uh, 22nd of May. Pulls back sharply to 1560. That's a 27 point decline. Then starts to rally, and that was to Truff D. Turns around to Truff D, the MACD is stochastic. There's the MACD, there's the slow stochastic. Start to move higher. What happens is, goes to peak A, B, C, D. It even goes to an E. And then you'll see that green vertical line shows that the MACD and stochastic are very close to turning around. My clue is the unbalanced volume, that blue line. And what happens is it pulls back and suddenly it goes to a peak F. I have a Chapman Wave song, buy at the low and sell at the high. Basically what it says, it explains the, the Chapman Wave methodology. It says the market goes up, the market goes down. It's supposed to buy at the low and sell at the high. But you know what we tend to do? We buy at the high and we sell at the low. So the Chapman Wave is what you need. You buy with the Stoke and the old MACD. Of course, you can also use just the blank chart. I'll show something in a few minutes with the blank chart. Um, uh, you follow the wave and uh, you buy with the Stoke and the old MACD. You follow the price and you wait for a peak. Higher highs is what you seek. The wave goes to A and then to B, even the anticipated C and D. That's when it flashes a cautionary light, but all you've got to do is make your stops real tight. Suddenly it goes to E and F, a bell rings so loud it can make you deaf. So what you're going to do, which way to go? You sell at the high and you buy at the low. So look at this, 1709.67 on the 2nd of August. The very next day it opens lower. It's actually where we went short. We're still short. And it pulls back all the way from 1709.67 down to 1627.47. That's a big move, one of the biggest moves it's had since that May decline. Now it's starting to, a, a rally attempt, and this is in leg B. The question is, is this a brand new buy signal going to a buy mode? Well, the MACD has turned up cross positive. The stochastic is moving nicely. There's been a divergence between the low from that trough D to trough E and the highest stochastic. So, yes, there is a chance. The month, But I'm going with the weekly chart. At this point, I'm still staying with the weekly chart. And the weekly technicals are so poor that it's saying that something really stupendous has to happen.
and that would say that the the e minis has to really it has to climb and go into the high of towards the highs of 1679 that was the very ugly candle of the of the 15th of august to really impress me and say wow this is definitely a u-shaped pattern and we're going higher and that is merely that's not going to be a peak f but it's actually recycled to a and you're going to a brand new b that's a brand new move i'm not calling it right now i'm saying this is a peak f something serious something you've got to respect that's the way I'm staying with it right now. And you've got your D. Remember the song says that D, you've got to be a little bit careful. Just raise your stops because it could have a sharper pullback. That's the way it stands right now. You can even go into the smaller time frames. There's 120 minutes on the E-mini that I just showed you. Um, I, I should finish this one on the daily. And that's in leg D. So we've got a coincident number of factors here that say, at least in the short term, what I'd say to my subscribers on my opening call, that's my daily service, Run about the uh, uh, um, 16, 64 ish area. That's where you should have some kind of a pullback. That's going to really be the test for the E minis. And the E minis have thus far gone to a high of 1665.25. Uh, so, Dan in North Reading, you are the first up, and I'd love to take your call. How are you? <laughs> you know, more so than before. I know. No, you can't, you can't ever stop. Ah, you know? uh, Dan in North Reading. Hello, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, how are you? Good. Um, sorry, the UPS guy just came and distracted me there. Um, uh -huh. I, I was taking a look at this SLX, and it uh, looks like I like it on the daily and the weekly, but a bit scared on the monthly. Uh, well, thought? I, my thoughts are... Uh, frustrating thoughts because I've been looking at United Steel, USX, be wanting to buy it. I had, I think we put in a buy. I'm not sure. I can't just, oh, let me just check. Uh, so US Steel, folks, we're looking at USX. Oh, sorry. We're looking at SLX. This is the market vector steel index. And it's on a tear. It is doing, a see, this is very different to the chart that we were looking at just a moment ago. And I'm going to explain why. Uh, yes, we took a tiny loss of 20 cents on the um, our small long at $18.67 on U.S. Steel back in, oh, I mean, uh, on the 30th of July. And then it pulled back. It actually pulled back quite sharply after that. So I didn't mind, but I, I'm, I'm upset that it's still early. But I am upset because this is definitely, uh, uh, U.S. Steel is starting to show that not the monthly. Monthly is just Hard, all the monthly charts on the steel stocks are just terrible. But when we're looking at the um, weekly chart, there's this H pattern that turns into an M pattern. Let me just quickly show, explain what that is. In my uh, in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave uh, methodology, what we look at is uh, Chapter 17 right here. When these patterns start to decline, the scallops go all the way down. Let me just there. And you keep making these, all of a sudden it stops go, coming down and it creates this H that goes to an M pattern. So I'll be, I'll be back in a moment and we'll be looking at SLX. This is the ETF for steel with Dan from North Reading. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain Contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
TFNN is having an open house in the Tiger's Den for two weeks, and the best part is that everyone is invited and you just have to be a member at TFNN. The open house in the Tiger's Den has already begun and will last through our week-long virtual trading competition, which ends September 13th. Use this time to exchange trading ideas with other traders in the virtual chat room and to discuss trading strategy. For all the information and to take part in the Tiger's Den open house, log on to TFNN.com today. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. As old, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman just finishing up in the den. Anybody you get, you know, if you're in the den, uh, you know that during breaks I do, I answer questions. I just type in exactly what instead of saying what I'm, uh, I would normally do, I just type in. It was just about the British pound that uh, another day in paradise, IDIP. Um, ADIP. I uh, wanted to know, and I just said that it's testing the left side high bar, and it's probably going to go higher, and I have a target of it at about 1.5830. That's the 200 period moving average. I'm not sure exactly on the time of that. You might have to do a little consolidating, but it's, it's going to get real close to that. So, And the monthly chart is terrible, but improving. The weekly chart is making a W formation. I like that. I'll get to it a little later on if I can, but we are on with Dan in North Reading. We're looking at the steel stocks. Now, I don't know if you heard this, Dan, but on Thursday, what I was talking about, Wednesday and Thursday, but especially on Thursday, I was talking about this divergence that I'm looking at that on the one hand tells me there's a rotational correction going on, and the other, it's telling me that uh, uh, if you are able to time the entry point into these other sectors on the long side, and if you're able to continue to time the short side on the sectors that are weak, have been weak, have made uh, tops, I think you can actually have a portfolio of longs and shorts, kind of what we've got, and that, in fact, would be one of the one of the very not the easiest way, but the most selective way of being able to uh, participate in this market and have a portfolio um, that you can sleep, I mean, pretty well at night because these are potentially the start of something new 
or the conclusion of something old. And if that's the case, then if those if if I'm correct in the trends, it's going to give you some comfort because any uh, whipsawing should be more intraday or two days, three days, and then get right back on track to moving in the direction that uh, we would be looking at. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that means we remain short the Dow. So far, we remain short the S&P. And what I've been talking about over the past uh, few days is that the rally in the steels, the rally in the autos, and the rally in the shippers, I haven't checked all the shippers, but certainly some of them have really come off the bottoms and, and they are using those single digits to give great percentages off the bottom. If it can last, that's going to be something that's very important. I'm looking at, say, the rest, not all the restaurants, but the restaurant group, the apparel group. If I look at the RTH, the RTH, which is the retail um, ETF, has made, to me, a very... Uh, um, a very significant top in the daily and the weekly. The monthly chart is still a big question. So that makes the steel, if I could look at AKS, I don't know if I've updated that. Yeah, AKS doing very nicely today. That's AK Steel. X is doing well. I'm trying to, the schwa, schwa, S-C-H-I-N, oh, I can't remember what that is. There are others in the group. But I should know them because I'm always looking at them. Um, so SLX is in leg D. That's the way I'm calling it right now in the um, in the daily chart. Made a peak E pullback. It's held at nine period moving average. Had a couple of real sharp moves to the downside, and now it's doing the exact opposite. Stochastics at 79 percent. MACD's just turned positive. So the way I'm looking at this. And let me just do this as a demonstration here for those of you who are new to my work. Let me just quickly grab this one here. I'll show another peak D. Look how nice these techniques work. This is A. There's that first peak. There's the second peak. There's the third. Now, do you have any position at all in this or just kind of something you've no, been watching? And now? I just, I just uh, saw it this morning and it was surprised at how far it moved. Yeah, actually, I've been watching it for a little while, but the, tr the problem has been, you can see by the chart, that when it takes off, it just takes off really big. And that actually is a nice sign of a stair-step move where it goes, it consolidates sideways, goes to a new level. Now, what I wanted to show is since it broke down back in April, I think it was April, uh, February of 2013, uh, the, on the 20th of February, it broke 46.59, which, which actually, no, the day before, on the 19th, it broke 48.48, which was a nine-period moving average support. And from that moment on, it has not, it got a little closer than that peak ABCD going to the May high. It couldn't get cl close enough, and it got repelled. This is the first time when it went to that leg C um, on the 9th of August at 44 round number high, that was the first time it has spiked over the 200 period moving average. Now, the rule of thumb that I use in this particular instance is that, uh, and I, I've spoken about this in the 10 years that I've been here, is that when I'm looking at charts, when I look at levels that have been um, resistance and then all of a sudden become support, that's a significant factor. Um, so we've got a break coming up, and that's going to, there's another stock that uh, Gringo in the den just brought up my attention, one that I, I should have remembered, I didn't, is STLD. So I, I'm going to make a suggestion about this. I'm going to take a little time to think it through during the break, and then we'll be back, and I'll, in the break, do STLT, STLD. And there's another question in the den as well. I'll be right back. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So we are looking at SLX. This is the Market Vector Steel ETF. I believe it's an ETF, not an ETN. It's an ETF. Uh, the monthly chart is actually improving a lot because it's trying again to go over the nine-period moving average. That's that black line. When you're looking at my charts, folks, if you're new to TFN, the left side is always the daily. That's the weekly in the middle. That's the monthly. When I click on the symbol, they all change at the same time, even the 120-minute chart, which is in leg C up. I... Um, Alex, I'm going to make a suggestion here, but take it, uh, you, there's no need to jump or anything like that. You can think it through. I would start a small position. It's in leg D. That says you've got to be careful because it can always pull back quite sharply in leg D. Also, it's attempting in the weekly chart to break the trend line resistance. But I'm going to make the suggestion that you start a small, and I really mean a small position, right now at 44.84, somewhere in this area saying to yourself okay even if it goes a little higher it should be pulling back and it should retest the 4360 to the 4311 area 4340 is the 200 period exponential moving average fast moving average the black line is finally crossed above the slow one that's a, that's kind of a positive sign a late sign but a positive sign but your real objective is to see how does it test 4340 to 40 4270 that area if it pulls back and it holds over the next week and a half that's if it hasn't gone too much higher that's going to be a big positive and to tell you that we are in this discussion that i've had about rotational 
correction, meaning that it will hold the Dow and the S&P up kind of well in this pullback. But if the rotation continues, I looked at STLD just a moment ago. It's the same sort of thing. That's uh, Steel Dynamics. Uh, you've got uh, USX. You've got um, – there was one other one. What I'm looking at is that I think the steels are acting quite well in relation to the market and it's telling me that there's a rotation going on into the laggards and this is the this is really important because the steels are the latecomers and then they usually top out and this the market continues higher and but they the the, the core of the, of the market is not there and you need the steels to keep everything going you need the aluminums so that's my suggestion a little nibble here but you really want to actually consider the position that you want maybe you just want to wait it's in the low 43s to the high 42s over the next two weeks if you can get it there i think that that's the entry point the real entry point so i hope that helps you dan it does thank you Thank you. So don't have to jump in, but that's kind of the area that I would, if you get into it now, it's just because if it gets away and breaks above the downtrend line, you kind of want to be in it, and then you can start. You'll have to raise your entry point a little bit, but at least you're in it, and it's going to give you a real good feeling for on market days that are weak, what happens to this particular sector. So there you are. Thank you. Okay. So let's thanks. go to, thank you for calling. Let's go to Alex in New York. Hi, Alex. How are you? Okay, Basil. Um, the QQQs have gone to a new high today. They went to a new high on Friday. Now, yes. does that mean the pullback is over in the Qs? Well, I have a way of looking at this that says there are a couple of things that have to happen. The, I almost treat the breakout as as a trend line, I'm, I'm showing the chart right now. In the long term, there was a peak A a high that I've used as a trend line starting point back in December of 2001 at about 43.24 and then it goes slightly above the high of uh, October of 2007, 55.07 but the reason why is because I've, I made the highs of 68.51 and 70.58 back in 2011 and 12 as the critical level and the, the, the queues could not, the PowerShare QQQ Trust Series could not get above it and what happened is that they struggled but they were walking the nine period exponential moving average in my book that is always a fantastic sign of strength and they are still doing that but there's something here that needs to be taken into account when when you're looking at the distance the percentage or the distance in points that the cues are above the black line it's saying that there's a little mini if I had to put a Bollinger Band actually it's not quite the Bollinger Band I don't want to mess with this chart right now but that that is like a resistance area and even from last month to this month the high uh, from 77.28 to today's high of 77.52 while it's very good is still within that parameter of saying the distance from the black line that's the 9 period moving average and even uh, the uptrend uh, the channel line, let me just draw that in here so you can see what I'm talking about, and there it is, is saying that, yes, this is really good action, but it's not great action. Under the conditions with the market having pulled back, it is pretty darn good. So I'm saying to myself, that's another reason why I have to call this a rotational correction. Now, your question is a very good one. Does it mean to say that the pullback, that double cup formation that we saw, where the queues went on at peak D to 77.18. Let me just open this up so people can see the chart. Does it mean that that high of 77.27 back on the uh, 13th of August with the with the cup formation and then it goes back up again to slightly higher, one penny higher, 77.28 on the 26th of August, then another pullback, a deeper pullback, and now we've gone above it, which in essence is like... Uh, an engulfing candle, if you take all these candles and put them together, so it's a little bit like an engulfing candle. Is that saying, with the stochastic at 77% and the MACD turning up again, that in fact we've begun probably, I'd have to call it a new leg B, or is it an old leg A? Now, here comes the real issue. 
Uh, first of all, I need to, is this a question, a market question, or do you actually have a position? I have a long position for much, much lower prices. Okay. If That's you long, have a long position, position, I've had it. If, if you, frankly, if you saw a print at 80.00, in other words, your round number, Right. If you sort of break 80, would that change your mind that, that this is really in a strong uptrend? Oh, I would tell you right now that if it gets above 78, 30 or something like that, I, no, even if it gets up to 77, 95, somewhere in the 77, 90s, I will have no choice but to consider that the queues, in fact, are breaking out to a brand new buy mode. In the day, I have no choice, and I'll explain why. Because I'm pretty sure the stochastic will be at 80% in the MACD, that the differential between the green line and the red line will be very positive. This is exactly the area right now that we're in, where the, if there's going to be a pullback, let's see. Yep, it's recycled. This is leg D in the 120-minute in the chart. So th where we are between now and the next... On the 120-minute bar, I'd say in the next five to six bars, so that's uh, about 10 hours or so, that's going to be very important. And um, so to answer you, well, first of all, congratulations on holding the queues all this long, keeping it as a core position and not being flustered by anything. Now, it does help that the queues have just been in a beautiful uptrend in the monthly chart for a long time. But at the same time, there were moments where you could easily have gotten flushed out by, 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 by just market conditions, and you've held on. I'm going to suggest, based on what I'm looking at now, that that core position just stays a core position. The only way I, in your position, I would not even want to mess with spoiling the percentage gains that you've got by, by being too fancy and trying to get in too early on any short position on the queues. But I can see from the chart pattern that I'm looking at right now that this whole, I'm going to actually circle it right now, this whole area that we're looking at right there, that whole area has the potential potential for the pattern that I call the stalk leg formation. And what that says is that this can go up in leg C in the weekly, and then at some point it could pull back and it could test the 75.96 level. That's the nine period moving average. And I'm probably going to be uh, very strict about this, that if it breaks 74.96 at any point in the next two to three weeks, that's going to negate the pattern and, and consider it a more serious top. If it doesn't break that pattern but holds and keeps trying to come back to the 76.10, 76.30 level, that's if it pulls back, of course, two points, then I'm going to say to you, that's the pattern that I call the stalk leg, and we should still go to a leg D, and after that D, we should come back very sharply, and that's the one that you want to see exactly whether it's going to break 74.96 or not. So 74.96 in both cases becomes really important. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to just quickly grab Apple, A-P-L, uh, right here. See, Apple's got a pattern right now in the, in the weekly chart that says, I've got a peak B. I've got 86% in the stochastic and the MACD is expanding. That is, the monthly chart is improving, but I have to exclude that for now because it really depends on the daily and weekly. If Apple breaks above 504, the round number high, 504.25, I'm sorry, no, it went to 513.74. I knew I hadn't updated that, 513.74, 513.74. So if a Apple's at 505.66, if it breaks 514, I've got leg C in the weekly chart. That's going to help the queues. So although the queues are not just Apple, it has to do with many of the other. Um, it has to do with many of the other uh, Nasdaq uh, high flyers, and a lot of them are the biotechs. It turns out. Then I'm going to have to say, you know what? Uh, maybe that that for now that consolidation is over, and that we've begun a new move, and the queues are actually going to lead the S and P, and then the Dow. I'd like to just look, if you don't uh, mind, at the. You, you uh, got to my point without me even asking you. Oh, okay. Because so that's I thought, the, I thought the queues could drag the rest of the market up, and and, and 
you know, the spy, the spy is only like three dollars and eighty six cents below its high. Correct. Of course, with, with the queues advancing like this, that it might pull the spies up with it. Right. The, we are at a vulnerable point news wise. Based on the weekly charts, because the stochastic and MACD in the in the IWM and the SPY and the Dow are really not, not they're not great those technicals. But as you know, I always look at this. I look at the the weekly as a sandwich. When the daily is very weak, it tends to drag the technicals of the weekly chart down from the highs and then it takes a, quite a while for the technicals to catch up and sometimes the price leads the technicals in the weekly doesn't do that in the daily most of the time they work they have to work in concert in the weekly chart of the IWM that's even a, that was even an a, a, the queues had a had a, a a very small pullback. The IWM also had a small back from 105.63 down to the 100.13. That's five. It's just five percent. So the, it's the Dow that has been the weakest, and the S and P has been the strongest. So what I'm looking at here is that there's a pattern that I identify. If I go to the weekly chart of the IWM, this actually answers a question that was asked about uh, from uh, one of my subscribers um, about the um, IWM. Uh, the pattern that I'm talking about, and how does it recycle? And well, how do I know that this is not in the IW brand new leg B in the uh, queues? How would I know that that peak F recycled to a peak G slash C? When will I get rid of the G and just call it a C? Well, a lot is going to dep depend on the daily chart. So, queues are the strongest as it stands right now. One of the reasons is, th is that Apple recycled towards the upside. It's acting very well. And there's news coming out, I think, in the next day or so about the, uh, the, the cheaper, uh, uh, I think it's uh, the, the, uh, about the cheaper cell phone, etc. But what I'm really looking at is the pattern above. Remember in, the, in, the, in bonds, I spoke about this pattern for a long time. I'm only talking patterns now. I'm not talking about the instrument. Bonds broke above that that. 28 year or whatever it was of the 31 year bull market that up channel that lasted uh, almost three decades and it broke above and then it started to break down and come below it what I'm looking at is just in terms of chart patterns if you look at the Q the QQQ series they've broken and now what they're doing is they are adding to that strength so all I can say is right now 7261 is a very strong support. That's the level to look at in the monthly chart. 75.96 is the level to look at in the nine period moving average support. And it coincides with the up, that red line for the up inside track, Chapman Wave inside track of that particular little channel there. And what we're looking at is how does the, how do the queues close today? Because if, there, there's a pattern that I look at that says, let me just get rid of this so that you can see what I'm looking at. The, that very, that crazy day that we had on Friday with an open that went higher and then a huge pullback and then a close formed almost like a, a Chapman Wave Roman candle in some of the indexes it is. And all I can say is that if the queues at any point break under 76.64, there's a real good chance they're going to test the lower part of the wick. That's the way it would look. Now, at this point, they're acting very well. So you've got a great question there. And all I can say is stay in your positions. I would not be looking to short the queues right now because they are the strongest. But they are getting a little toppy. And how it tops out, I don't know. So I'm following the chart. And you've got a great question, a great position. Don't do anything just yet. So thanks for calling, Alex. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, 
the Tiger Technicians Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began, and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to The Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to The Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear, or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. In the remaining time, we've got a couple of little things I want to get to here. Well, first of all, those of you who are using the Nadex platform and trading, good, good luck to you. Uh, you're going to be winners all the way through the week. This is a fantastic opportunity. So I want to show you something here based on the Chapman Wave methodology. Remember I was talking about the uh, follow the wave, uh, the Chapman Wave, from the low bar and the uh, E-minis. If you go to the 1656.50 uh, uh, low at 8.36 this morning, at um, this is uh, the 9th of uh, September, you go peak A, there's a two-minute chart, peak A, B, C, D. Remember what I said, you can pull back at D, but you've got to be careful. It's holding the line period, moving average, and suddenly it goes to E and F. That's where the bell rings so loud it can make you deaf. Why? Look at that. Look at that vertical line. You see the technics, technical aspect there? The stochastic's turning around, on balance volume turning around. That's where the MACD turns around, and it pulls back very sharply. Look at the bottom here. Starts a brand new uh, buy signal. At, um, so it went to a top at uh, 1665.25 and pulls back. Where does it go to? It goes right down to 1660.25. Stochastic makes a little V-shaped recovery, turns around. And it starts a flat, the H goes to an M. Remember the pattern we're talking about right here? The H goes to an M pattern, the Chapman Wave methodology. Look what happens. It holds, it holds, it holds, it holds, and it breaks out, and it's gone to a doji E in a left side, right side price time match, plus the inside wedge 
Chevrolet Inside Wedge says right there, it didn't actually make the high of 1665.25 or so. This is the moment that it says, be a little bit cautious because it needs a little time. And there are a couple of little techniques that say that at this particular point, there's still some strength. Resid I call it residual strength. MACD is not closed down yet. The stochastic is holding at 80.92. What you want to see is a break below 1663. And the moment it breaks below 1663, the stochastic has to go to about 76%. MACD has to cross negative for you to see this continue lower. As long as it's holding like that, there'll be that magnet of the 1664, 75 to 1665 area. That's what you want to see break to the downside if you want to short this out. I thought I'd go through that just basically the Chapman Wave methodology. Had a question. Watch the VIX. The VIX is holding quite well, down only 0.06. Not a very interesting day. Now, when we go to um, oh, a, quick, a quick thing here, had a question, a question, question on PAY. PAY is Vodafone. Uh, you know, I, I, if, uh, I can't, what was the answer? I said, are you long? Yes, I am. If you are long Vodafone, P-A-Y. Uh, why is it? Oh, it's not going on because I keep typing the right thing. P-A-Y. There it is. This is leg D. I'm just going to recommend if you're long, hold long. It's doing very well. The monthly chart is not great. Weekly chart is really improving and it needs to clear uh, 23.97. P-A-Y is at 23.26 right now. But this is what you want to take note of. You remember that 200 period moving average that I spoke about moments ago when I was talking to uh, Dan on the SLX? Well, look at this. The, that 200 period moving average just touched in leg D. So what I'm going to recommend is right now be prepared that there's going to be some kind of a consolidation. And even if it goes a little higher to the 2406, 2413 area, it's still going to come back and retest that 200 period moving average. You could even pull back, but it's great. This has become the line that it's hugging. It says that this is the most important line at 23. 2320, 2323. That's going to be a magnet growth up when it goes higher and when it goes down. So I think it's turned the corner in the daily. The weekly says, I'm in leg C. If I'm going to get leg uh, D, it should hold 20.66 on a worst case basis, but actually it really should hold about 21.30. So I hope that helps you. Congratulations on holding long. Another question I had is the SQQQ. Is it time to short? No, I wouldn't. I, I, just hold off a little longer. You're going to have time because if it turns around. As I'm folding out, uh, you've got uh, Larry Pesavento coming up to a fantastic show with Larry. This is leg uh, B in the Dow. What I'm looking at here is very strong resistance to the 15,070 to 15,090 area. It has to hold 14,900 on any turn around this week. I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for all the others here. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.